I already spent seven hours of the Saturday working on multiple cars. We might as well finish this with my own. Welcome to today's installment of Mike's Vehicle Vlogs. And hey, thank you for watching today. So today, we're gonna do the first service with my Civic ownership. So, it's basically just oil change time. And we're gonna look at a couple of other things while we're at it. I'm gonna check the status of the filters. Uh, also, you know, look at some other fluids. Everything should still be in pretty good shape, but like I said, the oil is really the main thing for today. So before I get cleaned up from a hard, hard day's work, we're going to go ahead and change the oil in the Civic. So at this time, the Civic isn't really at its 5,000 mile mark, um, but because of where the mileage is I'm just gonna do it now um, that way the next oil changes throughout the rest of this life with me and ownership is gonna be pretty easy to remember so the oil was changed at 51,250 miles so it's due at 56,250 and we are at 55,782 so like 500 some miles maybe a little under 500 miles at this point but then this way, if I change it now, then it won't be due until the 60,000 mile mark. So it's just easier to remember like that in 5,000 intervals, you know. So 55,000, 60,000, 65,000. Uh, the oil life monitor still says 50%. So um, it's probably going off of maybe 7,500 mile range. But we're going to change it now. Um, you can see there it says A2. So the thing with Hondas is there's usually either an A or B service that's listed. And then if something else is due, it's followed by a number. So in this case, the A is standing for oil change and oil filter. The 2 is calling for the engine air filter and the cabin air filter, um, which those were already replaced when I bought this car, I did it myself uh, in the shop. And uh, some of these you can't reset individual services like that. So when you go to reset this, it's going to erase anything that's due even if you didn't do it. <laughs> so we're not replacing filters, um, but that's usually what that means. So if you see an A1, that means uh, the one's gonna mean tire rotation, uh, the two, engine and cabin air filters three I want to say is transmission fluid I uh, don't remember offhand four is spark plugs five is uh, coolant I believe uh, six is uh, all-wheel drive fluid or rear diff fluid uh, seven is brake fluid so in this case it's calling for oil change and uh, air filters when we reset that, it's going to reset it all, and then depending on you know the mileage of this car, there's going to be other services that show up. Um, so we'll just leave it at that. So the car is by far not overdue. In fact, it's a little early, but that's okay. There's nothing wrong with being early on your services. All right. Ah, yes, nice and hot after a nice drive home from work. This was a brand new air filter. Let's see how it looks after like 4,000 some miles. Still looks pretty good. Not worried about this uh, little stuff here. What's that, a leaf? Yeah, a piece of a leaf, da da da. Yeah, so this, this is still good. We don't have to worry about changing this at all. Here's the stuff we're putting in here today. Do not be fooled by the diesel exhaust fluid label. <laughs> that is 020 
bulk oil from uh, the Honda pump. I believe it is full synthetic 020. And I brought some toys home from work that we're going to use with this also. Just to make things a little easier and cleaner. So to get to the cabin filter, squeeze both sides of the glove box. Bring it down. And there's our access door. Hopefully nobody's been living in here. Doesn't look like it. That's still a pretty decent looking filter. It's getting a little dark after 4,000 miles. But we don't have any large clumps of stuff clogging it up. So probably next oil change. Next oil change, we probably change this. Yeah, that's all there is to that. Alright, so let me go ahead and get this thing up on the ramps and we will move forward with our service. In case you're wondering why, you know, this hole, there's nothing there on the plate frame yet. I want to try to find some sort of Honda plate to put there. Kind of like what I did with uh, the Fusion. The Ford plate that I ordered for the Fusion is actually on the Fiesta now, which is at work. So I figured I'd take the dealer plate off for now <laughs> and uh, just paint it black. <laughs> I think that's gonna look kind of cool. I just did one coat, so I'll spray another coat on it. It'll probably look like trash after stuff from the road hits it. Which, by the way, I noticed... I thought this was dirt. Something chipped up my car pretty good, actually. I don't know how long ago this was. But man, there's a lot of... Uh... There's a lot of chips there. Just, just on this side. It stops. Uh, not so much on the other side. Now I know, I know this car wasn't in perfect shape when I bought it, but I definitely don't remember seeing all of this. And the touch-up guys would have definitely taken care of this. But I mean, that's, that's, that's a lot. So I'm gonna have to buy the paint pen for this color and actually do it myself <laughs> and touch it all up. So, um, but it is what it is for now. Yeah, and there's nothing I can do about it. By the way, if you are using this video as a how-to, do an oil change on your Civic of this generation, which is 2016 to 2021, uh, it's a very similar process for all of the engines that are in this car. So this is a 2 liter naturally aspirated 4 cylinder model. If you have a 1.5 liter turbocharged 4 cylinder. And if you have the Type R even, um, I'm pretty sure um, I just did a Type R today actually. I don't remember what the engine displacement was. But either way, across the board, all of these oil changes... Are pretty similar you're gonna be doing the exact same stuff we're doing on this very Honda today so the first thing you're gonna notice is when you get down on the ground you're gonna notice a shield <gasps> yeah no surprise right <laughs> just about every car today has some sort of under shield this one happens to be almost like an aluminum type deal so to get this shield off you're going to need 
a large Phillips and a large flathead. You're going to need the flathead because there are six quarter turn fasteners. And uh, sometimes they're a pain. They're kind of more difficult to put back in in some cases um, compared to uh, taking them out. Especially if your pan is kind of messed up. This one looks like it might have been damaged a little bit. Um, and I can see how it's flexed in a little bit here and a little bit over here. Uh, this is going to be a whole lot easier on a lift, probably. But nonetheless, it's got to come off. So you got those six fasteners there. And then you've got two Phillips at the front. Then you're going to push it back because it's got little things that slide into it. And when you're putting it on, there's four of them. So when you're putting it on, you're bringing it toward you. And when you're taking it off, you're pushing it away from you. Quarter turn. This is what they look like. They're just like little things with wings. You put them in there, you turn them half or a quarter of the way, and that's how they lock and unlock. They're kind of dumb, especially with the older. The older these things get, especially here in like Ohio and any place that you gotta deal with like salt, they start to actually get corrosion around them and they make it difficult to take out and even more difficult to put back in. So I can't wait to see how easy this is going to be putting this in um, when I'm done. The CRVs are the same way. There's, oops, theirs is a little different of a design on the bottom. But they also have six of these little quarter turns. And then they have three Phillips. The third Phillip is at the very back in the middle. Come on, there we go. I have a much better screwdriver at work for these than what's here in the house. See, now this one's kind of stuck because of how this is kind of weird. Ah, I keep picking up the wrong screwdriver. Okay, last one. All right, six of those. Two of these. Uh oh. Ah, yeah, this could be a problem. Uh, so I think this particular screw was rusted to the clip which means I'm probably going to end up tearing this off. Sometimes lubing those screws up before they go back into the home is a benefit. Apparently I didn't know about that when I did this to my own car. <laughs> when I started at Honda. We're going to end up destroying that screw too, I think. Um, but, you know, to be quite honest, when these come in, they're always missing something. They're either missing a screw, they're missing one of those quarter turns. Sometimes they're missing a lot more. And the thing is barely hanging on. So if I have to go without one of these fasteners, so be it. Alright, and this is what I had to do. <laughs> yeah, it's alright. Um, I can order that piece if I really wanted to. Um, I think this piece is separate from... Uh, the rest of the undershield, but yeah, so it's it's locked in there pretty good. See, it rusts. Um, the trick is, and I'm like I said when I did this the first time, I didn't really know about it, but spray some grease or some sort of uh, lubricant that keeps can keep these from rusting. So we do it every time now. I do it every time. Um, 
I guess for now that will just slide back into that little notch I cut out. <laughs> Alright, so here we are underneath uh, the 2 liter. Oil filter is right here at an angle. Uh, if you have the 1.5, it is in a similar spot up here at the front. Same thing with the Type R engine. They're all pretty much in this vicinity. And the oil plug is going to be here. So I don't see anything leaking or anything. Of course, we've got you know, the rust showing up. Go figure. All right, so let's get the... Uh, get the oil basin over here and let's start draining so this is a 17 millimeter drain plug I might be too far back yeah I think so there we go That'd be nice and toasty. Here we go. Yummy. That's okay. So very important thing here. We've never really discussed this on the vlog channel because we never really had a vehicle that pertains to this sort of information. Make sure you get a new crush ring or crush washer or sealer washer, whatever you want to call it. Um, just about every car that I've had on this channel usually has a drain plug that has an integrated rubber washer uh, but Hondas do not and there's actually a lot of other manufacturers out there that do not include a drain plug with an integrated washer uh, Toyota Mazda um, There's quite a bit um, Honda is obviously one of them so For one make sure you get the original ring off because if you don't and you put another one on there It's almost like a double gasket type situation um, This one came off just fine so we do have a new washer to put on this before we seal up our our drain pan or our oil pan. But yeah, make sure it comes off. Make sure to always replace it if you can. It's very important. You don't really want to use the same crush washer uh, more than once. All right, so I have my new crush ring here integrated with my my new Honda filter. place that on the drain plug and now we'll go ahead and get it going maybe <laughs> there we go all right and then something you're gonna see me do for the first time that I have never done with any other car for an oil change we're going to torque the drain plug down to spec. And the only reason why I'm doing that here is because of the washer, the crush ring. Um, so, at, at work, there's actually a drain plug uh, torque wrench specifically from Honda that we use. And uh, it is calculated to the spec and uh, you cannot change it. So 30 foot-pounds is what you have to tighten your drain plug to, according to Honda. So we have this set to 30 foot-pounds. There we go. 30 foot-pounds. All right. 
All right, so for our oil filter, I brought home a toy from work. My little jaw. The oil filter's kind of at an angle, so it's, this is the best thing that I have to use. You could probably use a strap wrench. You try to use some pliers, but it gets kind of tight up here against the engine block. But either way, you can find a way to get it out. Of course, it might splash. Of course, I got a hole in my glove. It's like, what's the point of wearing gloves? <laughs> All right, so our filter's off. All right, so with these filters, and technically any filter that you have that's wrapped in plastic like this, never try to open it by pushing and poking a hole through the center. That's a big no-no. You don't want to do that because if a piece of plastic breaks off in there, it can either clog up the filter, or that piece of plastic's going to be, end up floating into some place into the engine that it shouldn't be. Um, I actually watched a video from Honda when I got hired about this and there is video evidence of plastic clogging up oil ports and stuff in engine heads uh, because people were opening them by trying to poke a hole in the center. Never do that. Always try to tear it from the top. Like I said, that goes for any filter that's in plastic. It doesn't have to be Honda. Some aftermarket brands you buy might come in plastic. Never do that. And also, on these particular Honda designed filters, make sure that you lubricate the seal with some clean oil. I got some there. The way that they're designed is they kind of sit, they're kind of grooved into, into the filter. They're not flat. And, uh, you don't want it to pop out of the groove when you're tightening it up. So that's kind of important also. So we'll put our filter on. And we will tighten it. And these filters will get tight. Oh, my hand is all oily. This is not going to go good. So it'll go and go and then it stops. And then you can give it just another little turn and then that's all there is to it and then at work I have some spray I don't I might have some brake clean downstairs but I'll spray this off I'll spray the area around the plug off I already wiped it off and then make sure you you know any oil that drips into this you might want to try to soak it up so it doesn't you know kind of seep out you know and think that you're leaking um, so that's pretty much it all right, just like that, our cover's on. A couple of the half turns did give me a, a hard time. Uh, I might look into or uh, replacing this one uh, since it's kind of beat up. I might be able to get just the uh, the tin part, but if I did the entire thing, I probably don't have to do the entire thing. The rest of it looks pretty good. It goes just past the front wheels is where the whole plastic cover stops. I tucked that thing into the little cutout. <laughs> it might stay. It might not stay, but that's okay. And then I can order this plastic piece here specifically. So then if I had a new piece with some new screws and then this, that won't be cut out. But I'm not all that concerned about it at the moment. So, whew. All right, let's get out under here, get out from under here, and uh, get some oil in it. All right, I brought home another awesome toy: the spill-proof funnel. One of the greatest things I think I have ever bought for the shop. It comes with all kinds of adapters, as you can see. All kinds of adapters here. green one is for Honda and Nissan they share the same oil cap design so I love this thing just tighten it on there 
then you stick this guy on top of it. Great, I love it. All right, so this engine takes 4.4 quarts of 020. That's also including the filter. Um, the 1.5 engines take 3.7 quarts, I believe. And uh, the Type R engine I just did today was 5.7 quarts, I think. Double check your info. I've only done one Type R. <laughs> one type R. Um, but I know for a fact these are 4.4 quarts and the 1.5s are 3.7. Um, I don't really have anything to measure what I pumped out today. That is five quarts there. I bought five in case we needed it. So we'll just dump it in until there's, you know, not a whole decent amount. There's a decent amount left in there, and then we'll uh, we gotta get off the ramps anyway to check it on level ground. But then we'll check it, and uh, we'll top it off as needed. So that should be good to start with. Um, we'll go ahead and fire it up. So on these dipsticks, they're orange and you got two notches. The top notch uh, obviously means full, so bottom, watch, bottom notch is low, so the safe zone is obviously between the two of those. Sometimes they're hard to see, especially if you have extremely clean oil. Like as the engines get older, you're always going to have some dark stuff left on it. But sometimes you need the right amount of light to really look at it. So in this case, I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but it is just past the low mark. So add a little more. Okay, so now I'm at about the halfway point, so just a little smidge more. All right, you probably can't tell. It is just at the uh, the full mark. So. Check it one more time. Well, that should be it. Yeah, looks good here. We're done. And wipe up any excess oil or fingerprints that you may have left around. <sighs> Alright, and we're finished under here. See, before I was done up here, I put the uh, black plate on. I'm not gonna lie, I, I kinda like that. That looks pretty sweet. <laughs> I should have painted the screws too. I always can. 
I already nicked it with the screwdriver when I missed, but that's okay. It's not like the whole front of the car is not nicked up mysteriously. So, oh, I like that. I might just leave it like that for a while. That's pretty cool looking. Okay, so you've come to the end of your oil change journey, and now you must reset your maintenance minder. So we'll get this going here. So to get to the maintenance minder on this specific cluster, you're going to hit the, the trip button, you know, so you just hit it and hit it and hit it and hit it and there it is. Then what you're going to do is you're going to press and hold. It's going to start flashing like that. Then you're going to press it and hold it again. And there we go. So as you can see, it changed to service B. Service B is kind of, you know, oil change, oil filter, and then various checks, you know, uh, inspection of other parts of the car. Um, so that's that. Um, if you have the cluster that's all digital, um, where it's the screen in the center, you'll probably need to use the buttons that are here that I don't have to go through the menu and then you'll select that uh, through there. Or if you have the touch screen, the big touch screen, you'll have to go to settings and then uh, there's a thing in there that says vehicle, then you scroll all the way to the bottom and it says maintenance reset. And on those, you can actually reset each individual service um, as needed. So, we're all done. Uh, at this point, I have driven this car 4,485 miles exactly. And uh, our next oil change will be due around 60,000. So, sweet, we're done with that. I'm going to move the Saab back over here and put this car over there and call it a night because I'm very sticky and I don't like it. All right. Got the saw back up in its place. Started the Grand Am for a little bit. It's been a little while since we've ran it. I like that. <laughs> it's just black spray paint. I think it looks pretty cool. Anyway, that is going to be our first service of, with our ownership of the 2017 Honda Civic LX. Um, that's all there is to it. Nothing else to say. If you enjoyed this video, if it helped you in any way with your Civic of this generation, give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe. I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and take care.